Hello, it's Claire McNaughton here with the latest on looking for Mr. Rabbit. Well, it's looking for Mr. Rabbit not coming very soon now. So having had my little hissy fit um, on Thursday because my agent had said it was going to take a long time and, um, you know, that he didn't feel he could help me. He did then very kindly put me in touch with a with an editor who has edited Jermaine Greer. I mean, God, that's amazing. Anyway, so I had a really long conversation with her on Friday and uh, she has agreed to have a little look at the book, although I did explain to her that it is very much a framework that needs a bit of polyfiller and plastering and actually probably a complete rebuild, to be honest. But anyway, having had a little hissy fit and feeling very sorry for myself and deciding that I was going to um, publish, self-publish and be damned and was just like, oh, fuck you and fuck everything, I'm just going to fucking self-publish and you can all fuck off. Um, and then sort of pulled myself together. But the problem with me is that I am not very patient. And actually, I found this poem that I wrote when I broke my leg. Um, I broke my leg very unexpectedly um, watching the start of the Whitbread Round the World Yacht Race, which is now the Volvo Ocean Race, which is also about to start again. Um, and I think, I can't, oh God, I can't even remember what year it was. I think it was about 1996, 97. It was the very last year that the um, yacht race was called the Whitbread Round the World Yacht Race. Anyway, I broke my leg unexpectedly on a rib at the start of it. And I wrote this poem, which I'm going to read to you now. And it's called, Where Do I Find Patience? Is patience around the corner or is it out the window? Take a deep breath, relax, sit back. Will someone teach me patience within the game of life? What do you mean, soon, dear? I need to know it now. And I think that kind of poem sums up how I feel about life sometimes. I just kind of want to, I want life to be one long adventure. Every day, I want every day to be sunshine, beaches, high winds, great sailing, you know, just that's what I want life to be. And I find it very difficult with routine and mundanity and sort of the ordinary nature of life, which is very spoilt of me really because I've been very lucky to have a very adventurous life and actually next to the poem about patience um, is another poem I wrote called dreams which I shall also read to you if I could wish upon a star I'd fly upon a cloud of dreams to visit lands afar I'd bask in golden sunshine or dressed in cool crisp white I'd dance among the flowers fine and cherish my delight so I think it's quite interesting that these two poems in my little poem book are, quite, are next to each other. Now I've had a really interesting weekend because I was at the Salisbury Fringe Festival which um, I was introduced to by the Angie Street um, Playwriters course in uh, which I'm doing on a Wednesday morning with the She Writes programme which is about all women screenwriters coming together and learning how to write more effectively and expressively and I found it really interesting and it was introduced to me by a woman called Samantha Holland who was an actress that came to um, my children's school um, to do a play um, about the First World War uh, and its impact on um, the area that we live because we had a lot of Anzacs here in the First World War. And she did this fantastic play called Paper Bird and she introduced me to this thing called the Juno Theatre which is an organisation of women in Salisbury who are coming together to try and, uh, try and promote female writing. Now the good thing is... Um, about it is that I've been to the Fringe Festival and I've seen people put their plays out there and it's been really interesting to see that and I and I think it, one of the things it's done is it's ratified my feelings that I am a writer and I've got to stop justifying this thing in my head that I you know I don't need to prove that I can write I have written books you know and I'm going to show you now I have written this book can you see this and me oh look it's all reversed but never mind it's called Immediate Response and you can get it on Amazon and I ghost wrote it for this chap here Major Mark Hammond too and it doesn't go on with me anymore had a big fallout with Penguin who published this book and I'd buy the paperback version because the edit is much better because in this version um, the military held onto the copy for ages and did not read it and uh, it, this this edit was very qu quickly rushed through and the paperback version is much better and it's cheaper so I would buy Immediate Response by Major Mark Hammond if you want to learn about the role of the Chinook in Afghanistan it's a really good read and it proves that I can actually write and then of course I wrote which is also backwards, my Tales from the Domestic Front Line, which I self-published, which is the taster of Looking for Mr. Rabbit. It's not all about how Looking for Mr. Rabbit will be, but it sort of delves into the complexities of being married to somebody in the military. And really, 
It's about how it impacts my parenting decisions. So Tales from the Domestic Frontline by Claire McNaughton. You can get on Amazon, so I definitely recommend that you buy that. And also then I got it translated into French and did a book called Je Deteste Le Ménage, which means I hate housework in French, which is basically this book with a better cover, which I do prefer this cover, but I'm not redoing this cover on this book now because um, I actually want to take this book down um, from the internet and I will do when Looking for Mr Rabbit comes out. But I can't take it down because I do these WI talks. So I go to WI's around Wiltshire and give a talk to them about Tales from the Domestic Frontline. And I've got loads this year. I mean, I've done about nine already. I've got three this month. I think I'm booked right up the way to 2015. So it's a bit of a long update today because um, I was feeling really glum and now I'm feeling more optimistic. And now I've sort of come to terms with the fact that looking for Mr. Rabbit is going to take quite a long time to come out. I've got a lot of rewriting to do. And also maybe this editor will come back and say, do you know what? I don't think you should publish this book. And on some levels, there are moments in it when I read it because there's a little bit about bum sex in it. And I think, oh, it's a bit awkward. Not a massive bit. I just sort of reference bum sex. But, you know... Do we want to be talking about bum sex? I don't know. Do you want to read about... No, you, you don't have to read about bum sex. Don't worry. There's no actual bum sex in the book. But I'm just saying there's bits in it when you just makes your toes curl a little bit and you think, oh, shit, should I write that? And there's loads of stuff about my childhood in it. Loads of really embarrassing books. I mean, the three people that have read the manuscript so far, one of the things they've said is you are very brave with this book. Which, of course, here at the top of my house in my little attic office... I don't think of myself as being very brave because I feel very disconnected from the outside world. So I just think, oh yeah, fuck it, let's put it out there, man, and see what everyone says. But actually, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe it shouldn't be out there. So we're just going to have to wait and see, really. But basically, looking for Mr. Rabbit is not coming anytime soon. But I'm going to keep updating you because, as you can see, the journey just changes daily. I'm such a fickle fucker. So I shall speak to you soon. I'll see you next Monday, hopefully. I'm going to try and do this every Monday, but then obviously it's half term, so that'll change everything again because children, you know, they change everything. Anyway, speak soon. Ciao.